uh, meeting on local government and elections is now in session. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Senator Gannon? Here. Senator Crawford? Here. Senator Carter? Here. Senator Coleman? Senator Koenig? Here. Senator Rizzo? Here. Senator Washington? We have a quorum and we are going to move into executive session. Do I have a second? Second. Um, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing none, um, we, I move that we take up Senate Bill 879. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. This is Senator Beck's bill relating to fire protection services. Is there any discussion on the bill? Okay. I move that we vote Senate Bill 879 out of committee due pass. Do I have a second? Is there any discussion? Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Senator Gannon? Aye. Senator Crawford? Aye. Senator Carter? Aye. Senator Coleman? Senator Koenig? Aye. Senator Rizzo? Aye. Senator Washington? Um, by a vote of 5-0. Senate Bill 879 is due pass. Okay. I move that we take up Senate Bill 1091. Do I have a second? second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. This is Senator Esslinger's bill relating to sales taxes. Is there any discussion on the underlying bill? Um, Okay, um, yes, we do have a committee substitute ending in LR number 3716S.03C. I move that we adopt the substitute. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion on the substitute? All those, are, any discussion? Yeah, just, yes, uh, Senator. Briefly, is there, uh, is there any, can someone point the differences out briefly? Uh, on the sub, I, I don't know if I have it in here. Didn't know if there would be, but yeah, it has Bates County and then the city's like animal. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, we're good. Okay, thank you. Okay, all those in favor of adopting the substitute, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say no. The ayes have it. Uh, I now move that we vote Senate Bill 1091 with committee substitute out of committee. Do pass. Do I have a second? second. Is there any discussion? Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Senator Gannon? Aye. Senator Crawford? Aye. Senator Carter? Aye. Senator Coleman? Senator Koenig? No. Senator Rizzo? Aye. Senator Washington? By the vote of four to one, Senate Bill 1091 uh, with committee substitute has been voted due pass out of committee. I move that we take up Senate Joint Resolution 58. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. The ayes have it. This is Senator Luchtemeyer's bill relating to property tax exemptions. Is there any discussion on the resolution? I move that we vote Senate Joint Resolution 58 out of committee. Do pass. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Senator Gannon? Aye. Senator Crawford? Aye. Senator Carter? Aye. Senator Coleman? Senator Koenig? Aye. Senator Rizzo? Aye. Senator Washington? Five. By your vote of 5-0, um, uh, Senate Joint Resolution 58 is pass, due pass out of committee. Okay, uh, I move that we take up Senate Joint Resolution 78. Do I have a second? second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. This is Senator Ben Brown's bill relating to elections. Is there any discussion on the resolution? 
I move that we vote Senate Joint Resolution 78 out of committee due pass. Do I have a second? Okay. Is there any discussion? Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Senator Gannon. Aye. Senator Crawford. Aye. Senator Carter. Aye. Senator Coleman. Senator Koenig. Aye. Senator Rizzo. No. Senator Washington. By your vote of four to one, uh, Senate Joint Resolution 78 has been uh, passed out of committee. Okay. Yeah. Now we'll go back into regular session. Let me see. Is this it? Okay. Um, we will be hearing Senate Bill 724, um, executing. Pardon? Oh, we already did, yes. Okay, Senator Hoskins, when you are ready, you may proceed. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman, members of committee. For the record, State Senator Denny Hoskins here today to present Senate Bill 724. Uh, Senate Bill 724 would, would create the Office of Election Crimes and Security within the Secretary of State's office. Um, my vision for this would this would be an on-call, um, basically audit task force. That uh, if there was anything that they saw nefarious, or uh, whether it's before the election, on election day, or after the election, uh, they could immediately go and investigate. It also would create a voter fraud hotline that anybody could call into. I know election integrity is, has been a, a big topic of of conversation, and many times we hear, hey. You know, there's there's no election fraud in in, the, in Missouri. Well, I, I'm here to give a few, just a few examples. So, th this is from the Heritage Foundation uh, website. So, here's just a couple couple examples. Danny Williams of Boone County, Missouri, pleaded guilty to three felony counts of forgery. He falsified 114 signatures on 40 ballot petitions. This is in 2017. Uh, another one in 2017, Kevin Williams, a Nigerian citizen and illegal immigrant, voted in both the 2012 and 2016 elections illegally in Missouri. Another one, uh, Leonardo Lares Rodriguez, a Cuban national who lives in Kansas City, Missouri, was indicted and pleaded guilty to separate federal charges of casting fraudulent election ballot and aiding and assisting the preparation of false income tax returns. Laris Rodriguez, a non-citizen, voted illegally in six elections between 2010 and 2014. So these are just a couple of examples. I, there's several, there's pages and pages, not just from Missouri. Um, all those examples happened here in the state of Missouri, but uh, there's pages and pages from other states as well. And with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Any questions from the committee? Senator Crawford? Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Just a question about the subpoena part with the circuit yes. with the county clerks and that kind of thing i remember whenever we were working on our, our election integrity bill a couple of years ago right. we talked about that provision and it, some of the some of the county clerks both sides of the aisle were a little bit concerned that if you had for instance a republican secretary of state and a democrat county clerk could they maybe abuse that power or vice versa if there was a democrat secretary of state could they use that power against a Republican county clerk if there was if they had some kind of an issue with them? What any thoughts on that at all, or any way to maybe keep that from happening? Um, hopefully, hopefully that wouldn't happen. Oh, I agree. I agree. But uh, um, you know, I, I'm willing to listen to any concerns or or any any ideas about how to alleviate those concerns and I'm, I'm not sure if those would be real or imagined but i i think i, I can kind of see where they're coming from they wouldn't want to they just would want to make sure want, would want to make sure that's that the secretary of state didn't over or didn't abuse that authority i guess right, but right okay i don't Agreed. know that i have any suggestions on how to fix it i just kind of wanted to raise that concern and just since we had talked about it a couple of years ago i just thought i would mention it okay thank, thank you. you senator any other questions from the committee Seeing none, uh, first witness in support. Make sure you fill out a witness form and introduce yourself, please. Uh, 
Good afternoon, Madam Chair. It's a privilege to be uh, before your local government election committee. Uh, for the record, James Harris, I'm registered lobbyist uh, here on behalf of the Opportunity Solution Project to testify in support of Senate Bill 724. I think it has kind of three main uh, things that it does. One, the subpoena power to investigate alleged allegations or violations. Um, frivolous complaints uh, must be dismissed. Uh, two, I think it adds some transparency, whether for the, legis uh, for the legislature or the public, um, to file an annual report of, you know, inquiries, investigations, you know, those that are dismissed, et cetera. And I think any time with elections, having more information out there, because sometimes people hear things on the Internet and it might be nothing to it, might be incorrect, but at least if we can go to a source, a government report or something, that is helpful. And the uh, third piece it does expand, you know, the prosecutorial authority to the attorney general uh, to if if there's found to be some alleged uh, uh, inappropriate activities. With that, happy to answer any questions. <laughs> any questions for the witness? Yes, Senator Carter. Is this model legislation that you've implemented in other states, or is this unique to Missouri? I believe a few states will uh, do have this in place. I think the one uh, Florida, I believe Arkansas now, but I can check and get either to you, Senator Offline, or to mm -hmm. you, Madam Chair, a list of states that have something similar to this. Just curious how it's worked for them. And sure. Thanks. Any other questions for the witness? Seeing none, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next wit witness in support. First witness in opposition. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sharon Galway jones on behalf of the Missouri Voter Protection Coalition. Um, honestly, most of this is great. We're totally fine with the Secretary of State expanding the office that does investigations. Our concern is the concurrent jurisdiction between the Attorney General and the local prosecutors. We feel that uh, criminal violations should always start with the local prosecutor's office. Those offices are elected by their local government or their local constituencies to do that work. And so uh, if, if that were to change, our position would very likely change on this bill. Like I said, the investigations don't bother us. The subpoena power is already in the office, and the report would be great. But that concurrent jurisdiction gives us some pause. Any questions for the witness? Seeing none, thank you. Thank you. Next in opposition. Good afternoon, Senator, uh, Madam Chair. Um, my name is Jeff Smith, uh, representing the ACLU of Missouri. Uh, we advocate for the uh, citizens of Missouri's voting rights and civil rights. Um, brief, very briefly, uh, just to echo the concerns that uh, the previous witness gave, and also just to note that in terms of uh, the potential usurpation of local authority, there were concerns expressed about a year ago about the uh, circuit attorney in St. Louis and some of the dysfunction in the office there. And so I think this bill might have had some application when there was widespread concern about things going on in St. Louis. Now I think we've resolved that problem in St. Louis thanks to the uh, gubernatorial appointment. We've seen a total turnaround in that office. So insofar as some of the impetus for this bill was rooted in uh, some of the dysfunction in the office of of the circuit attorney's office in St. Louis, I think those concerns uh, should now be, um, are, are now unfounded. So we find this bill to be an, an unnecessary usurpation of authority from local prosecutors uh, and kind of redundant with some things that are already happening in the Secretary of State's office and uh, that's why we don't support this. Any questions for the witness? Seeing none, thank you. Next in opposition, informational purposes only. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Ladies first. Oh, oh. <laughs> Didn't realize we were coming from different ends, so Senator Hill, you? Great. Uh, Trish Vincent, uh, Deputy Secretary of State for Informational Purposes. 
glad to be here with the committee. First time I've testified this year, so. Um, so we do already have uh, a, it, it's called, just so I make, Missouri Elections Integrity Unit, and we do have a toll-free number that you can call to make elections complaints. We do investigate every uh, complaint that we do get, and just so the committee knows, uh, once the investigation is completed, whether it is referred or it is dismissed, those are public record, and we do have people that sunshine them all the time. So we don't necessarily put out a report. Uh, we do work with the uh, local prosecutors if there is, um, we think there's probable cause to refer it. That does go under the auspice of the, the prosecutor where the election uh, or the person is located. We do have rules that uh, outline uh, how we do those complaints and then under our election uh, uh, offenses there's an article or there's a statute there that gives our procedures on how we actually do complaints. Now we do this all internally. Um, we use our legal staff for investigative purposes because obviously if there's a complaint we want to make sure we're following the law. Uh, so we don't necessarily have a director and people that are investigators just solely for this purpose. Uh, it appears complaints kind of come in waves because we don't have elections every year. So, you know, every couple of years we'll hear somebody will be upset that, that uh, a poll worker didn't say something correctly. Uh, again, some of those are dismissed, but anything that's serious, obviously we take that very seriously as well and we put every effort into the investigation. Uh, subpoena power, uh, we talked to, uh, Senator Crawford talked a little bit about that. There, did, there was a sunset because that's the first time that the secretaries had subpoena power and not knowing who the secretary is going to be, we talked about that a couple of sessions ago. So uh, anyway, happy to answer any questions and just wanted to provide information to you all. Any questions? Senator Crawford. Thank you, Madam Chair. Trish, just a quick question that kind of came to mind when you were talking. Do you feel like we need a specific, and I'm not sure Senator Hoskins may want to answer this too. It, maybe, let me ask him and you this together if that's okay, Madam Chair. So what you have in mind, do you have in mind putting together like a, an investigative team that works on that year round? First question and second question, I'll just ask them both at once is, do you feel like it's necessary to have that kind of, would be necessary to have something like that year round based on the comment you made about uh, they don't come, the complaints don't come in all the time and I guess you can either one it was kind of like a joint question I didn't know who to ask which but it just sort of came to mind when Trish mentioned that I, I, I guess my vi vision would be yes it would be year-round now obviously um, probably leading up to an election uh, whether that's a municipal election in, in April or primary in August or um, November general election I'm, I'm sure the complaints probably get a little bit busier but you know, when we think of election fraud, we, we don't always think about um, the initial petition process and collecting signatures. And so uh, that's, I mean, there's a lot of people out there collecting signatures right now, and, and I'm not sure the exact date that they can start that, but I, I mean, I, I know that there's petitions out there. And so some of this um, election fraud, in, in my opinion, relates to that signature collection process as well. Well, related to signature collecting, uh, once the uh, it is certified by us, they can begin collecting signatures immediately. Uh, signatures are not due into our office till May the 5th, so we really don't know about any fraud, if you will, until the signatures come in and, and then they actually, you know, we start checking them. And re uh, remind everybody that's over, you know, 200,000, 300,000 signatures that we're looking at. Um, we get com if we would get a complaint off here, certainly we would put every effort into it. Um, again, what we've seen over the last now seven years, uh, it has not been overburdensome. We again, we take everything very seriously and look into every allegation. Uh, dedicating, I believe, Senator Hoskins, if I'm correct, it was a director and and two people. I will tell you in the off year it would be maybe a little bit hard to keep them busy but I'm not saying that you know there, there isn't additional things that can be done I, I don't want to downplay it depends on how it's organized I'm just saying the way we have it now we are able to do what's necessary and 
Um, you all probably remember uh, last session or last uh, uh, general election, we did have two people that voted in Florida and voted here in Missouri, and they were in St. Charles and voted in person. We did refer that to the prosecutor, and it's up to the prosecutor what they want to do. They just got a slap on their wrist. In my opinion, they should have lost their right to vote permanently. But so we do leave it in the hands of the prosecutor to go after these people. Many times um, they set those aside or whatever because they're interested more in murderers and rapists and you know things like that. So. Um, Again, I hope I answered your question, Senator. So follow up with the Attorney General being involved in this, do you think that would help with that piece of it? Just your opinion. I, that would be a, an answer for the Attorney General, not for okay. me. Okay, fair enough. So, sorry. Fair enough. Thank you. Any other questions uh, for the witness? Seeing none, thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Informational purposes only. Hello, Madam Chairman. Chair and members of the committee, excuse me, Chris Ropey here on behalf of the Missouri Association of County Clerks and Election Authorities. Um, I think to probably follow up on Senator Crawford's comments, um, our view would be that it could perhaps be better housed in more of an independent aspect or a nonpartisan aspect because you do have clerks and um, who are running elections of different parties, have Secretary of State of different parties, um, and the, the potential political conflict that could occur because of that um, would appreciate any consideration of um, possibly taking that kind of approach if this legislation would move forward. And also don't want to miss the opportunity to point out um, a lot of the instances of fraud or abuse that um, have been mentioned in the hearing. We've heard this several times um, in front of this committee this year. Um, when folks have come up to testify on behalf of more robust election laws and enforcing those laws um, that around the country, um, I think people look to Missouri and um, look at how, how good our laws are on that front. And, and I think that, that we should be very proud of that and to do a good job of catching those instances that have all been um, mentioned um, today and um, would be happy to work with the sponsor on this legislation um, going forward. Any questions for the witness? Seeing none. Thank you. Any final words, Senator? No, thank, thank you, Madam uh, okay. Chair and members of the committee. Okay, and this concludes the committee meeting on local government and elections. Have a great day.